Back in 1978, a small computer company in Ann Arbor, Michigan introduced their foray into the personal computer market, the Interact Model 1. We have two of these units today, and we're going to experiment with them right here on Vintage Geek. In 1976, a man named Ken Lochner worked for the Dartmouth Time Sharing System Company, and he decided that he wanted to build a computer, but at first it was just going to be an entry into the home gaming market, similar to earlier games like Pong and so forth, with a simple 4K machine, and then he realized apparently that he could make it into a full-fledged computer system, similar to other things that were available on the market at the time. So after about a million dollars in development costs, the Interact Model 1 was officially born and released in late 1978. Now, I have no personal experience with this computer whatsoever. Became fascinated with it almost immediately just because it's such an early introduction into computers. It looks like it has a lot of interesting and fun titles that we actually got with it on cassette. So we're going to try to get one of these machines working today. We actually have two complete Interact Model 1 systems, complete with joysticks and cassette tapes, and we're hoping that at least one of these will work and we can make function for the Vintage Geek Museum. A few things that I want to note first and foremost about this particular computer that I find the most interesting. There are no programs preloaded into the ROM at all. You have to load everything from cassette. Secondly, there is no character generator built into the computer itself, which means that everything is drawn bit by bit on the screen in real time. It also means that the resolution on the screen is pretty low. And lastly, the keyboard itself is kind of a weird combination of different technologies. It's not exactly a chiclet keyboard. They're spaced further apart than that, but there's a few weird anomalies about how the keyboard's actually laid out. There is no one at the left-hand side. It actually starts with the number two, and then goes all the way through number nine, and then goes back to zero and one, which is kind of weird. The system itself does not have any peripheral ports at all, except for the joystick ports. So there was no floppy disk available for this, as far as I know. There was no printer, just the system itself, the joystick ports, and an output for your television. But I'm anxious to turn one of these on and see if we can make it play today. We have a number of different titles for this, as well as the Edu Basic, which actually shipped with the unit, a very limited version of Basic. So we have two of these units, and the first unit powered up, but there was no video signal at all. It just created kind of a white screen, no words or letters on the screen, and none of the keys would do anything from that screen. So we kind of had to move past that one. This particular Interact model does does power on and it does bring up a screen. That screen shows the word Interactor at the top, which is not mentioned in any of the paperwork or anything I could find online. The first thing that's supposed to happen is it's supposed to bring up a screen that says press L to load tape. That was not happening. Just because I was curious, I was pressing all of the different keys along the keypad with the system on and found out by complete accident that the Z key would actually bring up the press L to load tape function. Now from that point, trying to load the tapes, we tried three or four different tapes. None of them actually actually worked and produced varying results from random patterns popping up on the screen to just garbage. Really, <laughs> there was just all sorts of different things that came up. But in listening to the audio the entire time, it became clear to me that maybe something is going on with the tape drive as far as its speed, or there's a little bit of a warble there. It doesn't sound quite right, which is weird to say about data on a tape because it always sounds weird anyway. It just sounds like something is off in the cassette machine. I actually tried to replace the belt. I don't have the right belt for it. I tried replacing it with a rubber band of all things. It did change it slightly as far as the sound, but didn't really make any difference in the performance or being able to load anything. The conundrum we have here is that this particular unit only has two ports on it and they're for the joysticks and they're in the front. There are no other external connectors for this particular computer, including that there's no way to connect an external tape drive to this. Many of the other computers we've looked at were designed to have external tape drives. Even the Commodore PET, which had the tape drive built in, could still accept a second external unit. That puts us in a weird position because we can't just connect an aftermarket cassette deck to it. Now, I was actually looking online at some of the other forums and there's not a lot about this computer out there, but someone had suggested that they had actual WAV files on their computer that they had recorded off of these cassettes and that they were using a 
simple consumer adapter to actually play those cassettes through the cassette deck in the Interact, which at that point wouldn't matter if the motor or anything was not up to speed because you're simply transferring the audio through the tape head in the unit. And we actually picked up one of these. It's about a $6 unit, nothing really special about it. I think this is a good way of testing it. We're gonna plug this in to the Interact, use this as the cassette, and then we're gonna use an external cassette machine to play the cassette tapes themselves. I chose Big Red here because uh, this is actually the exact model of Panasonic tape deck that I had as a kid. In fact, my son now uses it to uh, play books on tape. This thing lasted forever when I was a kid. It played every tape that I ever had, and I figured it was a good shot. After trying the external cassette player to play tapes into it and not having any luck, we actually went to an external website that someone had put an archive of cassette files for the Interact Model 1, which we were able to convert to a WAV file, play them on an iPhone through the 8th inch mini jack into the adapter into the cassette player. That also did not work, which made me think that there's got to be something wrong with the computer itself and the way that it's trying to load these files and not the cassette player. It was interesting to me and weird that the interactor screen came up when you first turn on the machine because all of the actual literature says that it should just come straight up to the press L to load tape, which was not happening. We had to press the Z command and it was very strange. So looking through the service manual, it did mention that there were a service center ROM that could be installed in these computers. It doesn't go any further to tell you what it was for, how it worked, how you installed it, but it was worth taking apart the machines to take a closer look. And because we had two of these, we were able to compare the two machines to see what was the same and what was different. What I found that was interesting was that there was an IC58 socket on the motherboard on this working machine or near working machine that had a really interesting chip in it with a handmade label on it and it's actually said IBOS. Now I don't know what that means but it's got to be some kind of diagnostic ROM or chip. According to the schematic all of the pins of IC58 are actually parallel to IC59 which is labeled as the main ROM for the system. Now I know that that's going into a little bit of depth, but to me that means that it's probably some kind of diagnostics ROM that would have been used by a service center that was apparently left in this machine. So, not knowing fully what it does, but knowing that the other Interact Model 1 we had did not have that chip installed, we went ahead and pulled the chip out of the machine just to see what difference it would make. And lo and behold, this time when we powered it up, it properly brought up the press L to load tape right away, and we already had the Star Trek tape in the system. That was the one we had the best luck with originally. We went ahead and let it load the tape, and voila, we actually have a working Interact Model 1 computer. Now granted, internal tape tape drive may still be having a few problems. We're probably gonna end up loading it from the external adapter using the iPhone, but that's okay. We now have a working machine that we can play with, and now I get to see what the Interact Model 1 is really all about. Type your name. Enter your ability level. I'm gonna go ahead and say one. Captain Vintage, the galaxy is under attack by a deadly Klingon invasion of 11 battle cruisers. Hit any key to continue. Your orders as of Stardate 685 are to pilot the Enterprise and destroy all the Klingons by Stardate 1763 or in 1078 days, hit any key to continue. During the game, any wrong key will type the command list, type question mark to see it now, hit any other key to start the game. Command list. Mission status, you are in quadrant 1-2, sector 3-7. Command. I mean, let's fire some torpedoes, right? Torpedo course. One, two. I'm not sure what it's asking for here. So the only piece of information on this game is strategy series, your mission, destroy Klingon space raiders before they destroy the Enterprise or you run out of time. Watch out for deep space dangers. Literally all this says there. <laughs> There is not a single instruction. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that I don't know enough about this game to know what I'm supposed to be doing here. I'm gonna try a different piece of software now that we know that this will load. Pretty good looking logo for Interact Basic. All right, we've got a prompt. I thought for just trying this out, we could try one of these sample programs in the little brochure that came with the system. again.
Kind of sounds like the intro to Twilight Zone. Lots of random patterns on the screen, random sounds and tones. Doesn't say how to break out of a program. I don't know if you can just hit reset or if it'll still keep the program in memory or not. I hit restart, just curious if it saves the program. Yeah, it does. Again, the reason it takes so long for it to display all those lines of text is because there is no character generator in this computer. It's literally just writing out each pixel as it goes, which for a 8080 processor, in 1978, actually took some time. I have to hand it to them on the intro screens. They did a pretty nice job with the graphics on these. I'm assuming the graphics in the game aren't going to be as good, but, uh, you know, well done. Left player, type your name. Oh. <laughs> well, this is going well so far. It's inverted controls, apparently. Oh no! <laughs> I guess there's no actual winning point or anything in this. <laughs> Ten to ten. That was a fun little game. For 1978, doesn't look too bad. Again, I love what they've done with the actual title screens on these. They're very colorful, they look good. And for 1978, again, pretty impressive. So we've got uh, some modes here. Practice, new tune, play, edit, tune, set key, set time. Oh, so they do give you some options to read from tape and to write to tape. Oh, cool. It's actually kind of neat for its time to actually put the notes on the scale like that. I think we got an award-winning tune right here. Let's hear that again. It'd be kind of fun to spend some time with this, especially if, you know, you're musically inclined. That is a nice looking cat. And the cat is in the maze and there's a mouse too. Visible maze. I, I'm going to go with yes, because I, I feel like this would be really difficult without a uh, visible maze. All right, one player. We'll start slow. Uh, yeah, of course we want the cat. We'll make the cat go slow also. Where is... Oh, there. There I am. Oh no, dead end. <laughs> this is not the exit, is it? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Come on, I gotta beat this guy. <laughs> I like that it generates different mazes every time. Movement's pretty good. Should probably actually study this before I start making my moves. But it's so nerve-wracking with that cat hanging around like that. I'm gonna make it. Suck it, cat. <laughs> yes, I've been avenged at least partially. What a nice looking house. It's got a little chimney, some smoke coming out of the chimney. Good use of color. The actual title, Computer Color, looks a little bit washed out the way that it is, but again, it could just be the uh, video output on this particular screen. 
Now for this particular piece of software, we actually have a keyboard overlay that tells you what the keyboard functions do. We've got brush directions, full screen, erase screen, and we've got paint box colors. Let's see what the paint box colors do. So at the bottom of the screen, you've got four paint boxes, it looks like. You can change the color of each one of those boxes. And it looks like right now the first box is what the background of the screen is. I notice they did not have any functionality for holding down a key and making it continue to go. The program begins when a flashing index, light, and four color paint boxes appear on screen. The joystick, oh, the joystick. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think about that. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> Still not sure how to move it without, oh, wow, you can even, uh, doesn't have to be perfect. Joystick moves the paintbrush up, down, left, right, or diagonally. To move the brush without leaving a trail, hold down the hit button. I mean, I feel like for a joystick control on a 1978 machine, it's kind of there. We discovered in going through some of the paperwork that came with this Interact Model 1, an actual sheet of paper that was handwritten that appears to be a guide to that special ROM chip that we found earlier, which is actually pretty cool because it makes a lot more sense now. It actually showed that Z was the command to load games using the original ROM. I don't know what the other functions do. I don't know what Interactor means, but I do really want to request that if any of you out there watching this happen to know anything about the Interact Model 1, Maybe you worked on one, maybe you knew someone that serviced these units. We'd love to hear from you in the comments because I'm very curious as to what that developmental ROM did and what kind of tests you can do with it. We could certainly put it back in the machine sometime at the museum if necessary and try it out some more. Glad that we have one of these functional. We have another non-functioning unit that we'd like to get functioning at some point. So again, if you know anybody that knows about these, especially how to service them, We'd love to hear from you. Hey, if you like what we're doing here at Vintage Geek and with our videos, please like and subscribe. It's gonna help us a lot as we move forward and as we continue to build that museum. In the meantime, continue to enjoy. Check out our other videos on the channel and thanks for watching Vintage Geek.